Welcome to the Marriage Steps Podcast, where developing a long-lasting, happy relationship is the status symbol to achieve, and following my six marriage steps is a path to help get you there. I'm your host, Dr. Wyatt Fisher, a licensed psychologist specializing in marriage counseling. The Marriage Steps Podcast is listener-supported, so to help keep it on the air, please consider becoming a monthly supporter so couples worldwide can receive hope for their marriage. You can go to patreon.com forward slash marriage steps. And there's a variety of packages and price points to consider. The marriage tip of the night is never stop dating your partner. When was the last time you went on a date? Was it a month ago? Was it three months ago? Was it a year ago? Now with COVID, going on dates can be even trickier because now for a lot of us, our only option is doing something at home, especially if you have kids. So have a home date. Do something at home if you need to. My wife and I have been experimenting with home dates and we've done several different things lately. Um, One night she surprised me with a a midnight bike ride with flashlights under our head. Another time we had a picnic down by the creek behind our house. Another time we took an online tour of the Roman Colosseum, which was really cool. So you gotta be creative. What are some things you could do for you and your spouse for a, a date, a home date? Now, as a reminder, you want to do four things during your dates. You want to cultivate emotional intimacy. You want to have a lot of affection. You want to have something recreational and something sexual. If you do all four, most likely you'll both walk away saying that was a good time. When you were first getting to know your partner, you dated them all the time. That's all you did was date them. That made you fall in love with them. That made you want to marry them. But once you're married, we stop dating our partner because everything else gets our attention, our kids, our career, our finances. You have to start dating your partner again to bring back the very feelings that were created from dating them in the first place. The marriage joke of the night is my cross-eyed wife and I just got a divorce. We just couldn't see eye to eye. And I also found out that she had been seeing someone on the side. (laughs) Okay, the marriage message of the night. I'm gonna go through five questions to cultivate emotional intimacy in your marriage. Five questions. First one, what are you most stressed about and why? What you're stressed about today is different than what you were stressed about last week, a month ago, two months ago, a year ago, and likewise with your partner. A lot of times we make assumptions that we know our partner well, but we get outdated. We need to regularly ask questions to know what's going on inside of them, what's going on inside of their heart and inside of their head. We need to ask those questions. So when my wife asked me this question, we went through these five questions during our last date. When she asked me this question, at that point, the thing that was stressing me out was our kids, having four kids. Three of them are teenagers and they can be a handful, as I'm sure you know and you can relate to. So that was stressing me out that day when she asked me that question. So what about you? What are you most stressed about right now in your life and why? Second question to ask your partner is what are your biggest hopes over the next year? We all need something to look forward to. We all need goals. We all need something we're striving towards. One of my goals, something I'm looking forward to or am hopeful for is spreading my seminar, The Total Marriage Refresh. Right now, I do The Total Marriage Refresh in Colorado and in Texas and I'm hoping to move it to California. So I'm looking over this next year as a time to brainstorm and develop a strategy and a model so I can start spreading the seminar to more and more cities to hopefully help more and more couples. So that's something I'm hopeful for over the next year. What about you? What are you looking forward to over the next year and your partner? What are they looking forward to? What are their hopes over the next year? Number three, What's one thing you wish we did more of? What is that for you? What's the one thing you wish you and your partner did more of? Maybe you wish you had more affection. Maybe you wish you had um, more sex. Maybe you wish you had more heart-to-heart conversations. Maybe you wish you had more quality time together. What is it for you that you wish you and your partner had more of? For me, when my wife asked me this question, I wish we had more experiences together. I crave more experiences, experiencing something new and fresh and exciting. 
And actually, that's what led us to these online virtual tours where we did a, a virtual tour of the Roman Colosseum and it felt like we were there. It was really great and it felt like we experienced something new together. So that's something I crave and want more of in our marriage is new experiences together. So what about you? What do you crave? What do you wish you had more of with your partner? Talk about it. Ask him that question. Number four, what's one, tra- one change I could make to be a better partner? That's the, next, that's the fourth question to ask your partner. What's one change I could make to become a better partner for you? What an amazing question that is. Do you realize how much you could transform your marriage if you asked your partner that on a regular basis and then did something about it? What's one change I could make to become a better partner for you? So when I asked this for my wife, what she told me is she would love for me to check in with her once a day, just to slow down, go up to her and check in. My wife is more introverted and she can be withdrawn And so she appreciates it when I draw her out, when I focus on her and slow down and enter into her world and ask her some questions or give her a compliment or give her some affection or do something kind for her once a day. Okay, she loves that and she desires that. What about you? What do you desire more of from your partner? What's one thing you wish they would do more of every day? What is that for you? And what do they wish you would do more of? So that's the one thing that they could do to become a better partner for you. That's question number four. Number five is what are the top things you'd change in your life together and why? What are the top things you would change in your life together and why? This is a great question. And in the psychology field, this actually comes out of solution-focused therapy. Solution-focused therapy helps people immediately get to the solutions. And one of the, the best interventions for solution-focused is called the, the magic wand question, which is, if you had a magic wand, what are the top three things you would change about your marriage and why? And I actually use this question when I'm working with couples during our intake appointment. I'll often ask them, if you had a magic wand, what are three things our time together could accomplish? and then they give me their top three goals. So likewise in your marriage, ask your partner, what are the top things you'd change in our life together and why? When I asked my spouse this question, she said she wishes we could have more quality time together, the six of us as a family. And I agree, that's one thing I wish we could have more of as well, because with four kids, three of them being teenagers, it can be tricky to have quality time together, something that they all enjoy, and something where they're not just staring at their tech the whole time. Because then if you take away their tech, then they get frustrated at that. And so finding a balance so that we can have regular time to connect as a family is something we're currently working on, trying to improve for our family. So what about you? What changes would you like to make in your life together and why? So these are deep questions. They can take a while to answer, take a while to reflect on, but if you ask each other these questions during your next date, it's a great way to cultivate emotional intimacy to get to know your partner better and to cultivate more connection. So here they are. Again, number one, what are you most stressed about and why? Number two, what are your biggest hopes over the next year and why? Number three, what's one thing you wish we did more of and why? Number four, what's one thing I could do to make, what's one change I could do to make me a better partner for you? And five, what are the top things you'd change in our life together and why? Great questions. Ask your partner those questions, have them ask you those questions so you can cultivate a greater connection. Thank you for listening to the Marriage Steps podcast. If you enjoyed the episode, be sure to click the five stars and leave a review. Also, be sure to send me your marriage questions through Instagram, Facebook, or you can email me at info at drwyattfisher.com. Also, be sure to go to my website, drwyattfisher.com, for more marriage resources. And remember, your marriage is alive. If you care for it, it will grow. But if you neglect it, it will die. The choice is up to you. Take care.